Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Audit and Governance Meeting, Tamworth Borough Council, Wednesday, 10th of August. Uh, Going to kick straight off with the agenda. Apologies for absence. Uh, we've received apologies, from, uh, apologies for absence from Councillor Paul Turner, and why I'm in the chair this evening. Uh, I've also received count, uh, apologies from Councillor Daniels. They're the only apologies that have been received. Item two, minutes of the previous meeting, available on page five to ten of the agenda packs. Someone to please move that there at true and accurate record. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Councillor Cook, for seconding. Um, for balance and uh, for, for procedure, all those in favour? Thank you very much. Number three, item three, declarations of interest. Any councillor have any declarations to make this evening? No, nope. fantastic. Uh, number, item, agenda item number four is update from external auditors. I believe they've just arrived, but I'm going to hand over to uh, Stefan for a moment. I'm not. I'm going to wait for Lauren to take her seat. <laughs> uh, wait till she gets settled, uh, and then I'm going to ask an update from our external auditors. That's a good point, Councillor Cook, and if the committee's happy, we will do that. Fantastic. We'll go to item five uh, first, then before item number four. Uh, Rick Management Quarterly Update, which is a report of the Assistant Director, Finance. Thank you. Right, so, um, the Risk Management Quarterly Update. This is the regular quarterly risk management update for the committee for quarter one of the 22-23 financial year. A copy of the current corporate risk register is attached as Appendix A. Following the meeting of this committee in June, where the risk scoring for the modernisation of the commercial agenda as green was queried, the scoring has now been reviewed and revised to show an amber warning status. The risk control measures contained in the report will be developed during the next quarter to reflect the strategic objectives of the revised corporate plan for 22 to 25, which is attached at Appendix B. Concerns around shortages of skilled workers and cost and supply pressures remain, with inflation expected to continue to increase in the short term and increasing fuel costs of particular concern. The cost of living crisis could also impact collection rates for council tax, housing rents and other income. The situation will continue to be monitored. The committee is asked to endorse the corporate risk register. I'm happy to take any questions as well if anybody has any. Thank you very much. Questions from members, please. Council Cooper. Yeah, just with regards to the the, um, the corporate risk register, I, I noticed in the um, health and safety part of it, uh, is there any chance we could add a line in there regarding climate change and the immediate impacts of that? Um, obviously, we, we, we can sit and feel the, the heat uh, that, that's currently going on, and that's having an impact uh, on councils um, around the country with one council um, this evening, uh, saying that they're, they're officially in a drought situation and they're about to receive bottled water and, and, and tanks of water delivered. So is there, is there any chance that we can have that highlighted as a risk? Thank you. Yeah, I can certainly um, look into that. In line with the new corporate plan objectives, I think climate change is quite high on the agenda. So we are looking to incorporate those into the risk register. But, yeah. Yeah, I saw that, but it's more it's it's more in line with um, sort of the future impacts and our recycling plan, which is really good to see. But I'm I'm thinking more of the immediate impacts of of uh, extreme weather events. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to do my best here because for some reason my Wi-Fi won't connect and I can't get into the report. So I'm going to do, do, do my best. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, obviously, um, I come from a logis logistics background myself, as you're aware. Obviously, you've highlighted fuel costs, uh, which are expected to continue to increase through the year. We get a lot of projections on a daily basis that say it will definitely clear £2 a litre again at some point. Um, but it also says in there, you know, a risk of HGV driver shortages. Well, actually, at the moment in the industry, there isn't an HGV driver shortage. There was, and there potentially will be again, but because there's been a downturn in the UK shipping market, there's actually an abundance of HGV drivers in the industry as we sit and speak. 
where if the British economy picked up, which is something that's not expected, the shortages would begin again. So it's worth noting there isn't one currently, but there could potentially be again. So I just, um, I'll, I've got a few questions on this report, but I'll, I'll just follow on from Councillor Cooper's point. Obviously, at Appendix 2, we've got the corporate plan summary. Obviously, but there's no um, corporate objectives dropping away from that. What, what are the measurables? Have we not put those together yet? So on the corporate risk measure in Appendix A, we've got the corporate risk and then we have risk control measures. Yeah. So what we are looking to do is to make sure that they align now with the corporate plan objectives, because obviously the corporate plan has, has changed. So we want to make sure that they are now feeding into the corporate risk register. Absolutely. I mean, the point I want to make, and it's an unfair question to ask of yourselves because it's more of a political point than actually a question for an officer, is we're all fundamentally aware our corporate vision was built on the back of political priorities rather than an actual evidence base. So when I ask a question like, you know, where's the measurables? Where, how do we say we're achieving against the visions? Because they don't exist yet, because we've not shoehorned them into the vision yet, which makes it very difficult to take a vision seriously when there's no measurables to it. And that, that's my question. But I think it's more of a political question. It might be a bit unfair for yourself. Sorry, um, the latest or the first quarterly performance report, I think it's just been published, hasn't it, for Corporate Scrutiny Committee. So that does include those key actions against those corporate, those five corporate priorities that are now in the, the corporate plan and the latest position on that. So that, that has just been published for the Corporate Scrutiny Committee uh, agenda, which I think is next week. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much all. Uh, Councillor Cook, you indicated you had a few questions. Do you want to come, uh, come in with any more? Um, again, I've got some questions on this, but I'd rather actually take it with the Leader of the Council because obviously, again, on this um, particular document where we set out the Council's corporate vision, nowhere does it mention homelessness and mental health, which I think is a fundamental tragedy, but I don't think, again, that's a question for the officers that are with her. It's more of a political question. I wouldn't expect them to put themselves through that. Um, my only other question really was, uh, obviously, we've got on page nine, uh, community focus, it's obviously still not in a good place and you know, that, that does give me concern. I mean, what, what actions are we putting in place to improve our community focus? Could you just repeat that, sorry? Yeah, on page, page nine. nine. Yeah, if I may, um, that's what Joe was saying uh, earlier. What we're, we're going to do over the next quarter, I mean, the, the priorities are there, the, the, the objectives and the actions associated with those priorities have been published and obviously reported on within the, the performance report. But what we, we need to do for the next quarterly report is align those to the risks. So at the next quarterly report, we'll have those. So you'll, you'll hopefully see quite clearly these are the actions associated with those risks in order to you know, work to mitigate those, those risks in the future. Thank you, Chair. So just understanding that correctly, Stefan, and I think I know where you're going with it, is obviously we're in the process of changing our corporate vision and the new one that was put through with the budget in February. We're in the, in the process of aligning it to the risks and making sure everything aligns correctly. So at the next uh, report, we should see a better alignment, and, and you know, the answers to my questions are more obvious. Yeah. So, you, basically, the answer is be patient, and you'll see it. I'm prepared to accept that. <laughs> any further questions? Uh, any further questions or comments from members or officers? A recommendation is we endorse the uh, content of the report. Can I have someone to move that, please? And Councillor Cooper second. Thank you very much. All those in favour, and that is passed. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we're going to jump back to item, uh, what was it? Uh, I'll just do audit. Uh, item number four, um, which is uh, update from external waters. So, Lauren, and over to you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you for giving me a couple of minutes. Um, so it's going to be just a brief uh, verbal update from me. We, uh, we started the audit few weeks ago um, so we are kind of in in the midst of things at the moment um, we have had uh, a bit of sickness on our side um, so we 
were behind at one point, but uh, we've pretty much managed to pull that back. And I think at this point in time where we wanted to be was uh, in a position where we'd kind of got all of our sort of sample selection done and all of those samples for our substantive testing were out and with the finance team. Um, and we're reasonably confident that by the end of this week, that will be the case. So we are still um, pretty much on track and where we wanted to be, which is which is quite positive and um, a, Thanks to the to the finance team for all their support because it's been quite an intense period, I think, all, all round. Um, so unless anyone's got any specific questions, that that's sort of my update at the moment. It's all in progress. No significant findings to report at the moment, but also we've not finished anything, as it were. So. Thank you very much. Any uh, questions or comments from members of the committee? <laughs> Laurel, thank you very much. Just oh. to move about my thanks uh, for that update. That's right. That is, uh, of course, and um, any one of us, I'm assuming, will second, so I'm going to pick on Peter. Uh, sorry, Councillor Thurgood. Um, and we're all going to support that, so I'm not even going to have a vote. <laughs> um, Lauren, we've got an, uh, a shout afterwards with the after the meeting, so thank you for that update, and we'll look forward to bringing you back in after the meeting is officially closed. Item number six, quarterly internal audit progress report, quarter one. Andrew. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present my quarterly internal audit progress report to this committee. The report outlines the work completed during quarter one of 2022-23 and also provides an update on outstanding audit recommendations. I can report that we have completed 6% of the current audit plan as at 30th of June 2022. The low coverage currently has been due to a number of factors relating to the closure of work from the 2021-22 audit plan, which included the reviews of NNDR and assets and inventory, and also a significant amount of grant assurance work that we've had to complete during that quarter. Whilst we've only completed a limited amount of work within the plan, we have progressed three audits during the period, and those include cemeteries, landlord health and safety, and IT web portals. Two of these reports are at draft report stage, and the remaining audit, Landlord Health and Safety, the field work is underway and ongoing currently. The internal audit work completed is summarised in Appendix 1 of my report. During quarter one, we have been attempting to recruit to the currently vacant senior auditor role at Litchfield District Council. As the committee may be aware, as part of the shared service arrangement between Tamworth and Litchfield, this provides an opportunity to share resources and backfill work as required. Unfortunately, we were unsuccessful during the two recruitment campaigns that we have conducted, so we look to obtain resource from external contractors using an NHS framework agreement. I held initial discussions with one supplier who was unable to facilitate the required number of audit days and have therefore approached a further supplier with more success. I'm currently in discussions with this supplier with the intention of getting them working on Tamworth audits in the upcoming weeks and months. At the Audit and Governance Committee meeting in June, specific questions were raised concerning outstanding audit recommendations and I provided an analysis for the period quarter two 2019-20 through to the current date. I was also asked for further information going back further, approximately five years. However, due to the changes in assurance levels and also the priority of recommendations, for example, we, we started to include low priority recommendations, so we just had high and medium previously, comparative examples weren't available. In addition, during the period quarter four 2019 to 2020 and quarter one 2020 to 21, we agreed a new approach with this committee for following up outstanding audit recommendations, and therefore that's the reason why the data isn't available within the tables provided in the appendices. However, overall, the number of outstanding audit recommendations has reduced over time due to the work completed by my predecessor in 2019-20. In addition, when I took, my role, took up my role in June 2021, I was given a specific objective to introduce regular quarter meetings with assistant directors to discuss outstanding recommendations and obtain updates regarding the progression and completion of these recommendations. I continue to hold those meetings with management and report regularly to this committee on numbers outstanding. 
As of 30th of June 2022, as my report outlines, we have 14 high priority recommendations, 35 medium priority and 11 low priority. As outlined and concentrating on the 14 high priority recommendations outstanding, I can report that following my meetings with assistant directors, the list is broken down as follows. Of the 14 high recommendations, one is complete, fully completed. And as part of our review for high recommendations, we actually go back and look and actually request audit evidence support those that they have been fully implemented. 13 of the remaining audit high priority recommendations of which of those eight of 10 are actually overdue currently and of which out splitting that, that figure down of the 10 further down, two became overdue in third, on the 30th of April 2022 and the remaining eight became overdue on the 30th of June 2022. So those, those are being currently reviewed at the moment. The remaining three high, pro high priority recommendations are currently being progressed by management and they, and they are scheduled to be completed by the 30th of September 2022. Obviously, I'll keep committee updated and appraised of the, of, of the progress on those high priority recommendations. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you very uh, much, Andrew. Before I open it to questions, I think I'm the only member of this committee who has been in... No, council group as well. We're the only concurrent members who have been here since you took over uh, this. So just uh, thanks to you for working so uh, diligently on the, the amount of order recommendations. Um, yeah, I think it was mentioned in our pre meeting it's come down significantly and uh, I, as vice chair and chair of this meeting tonight, I'm, I'm grateful to you for the work you put in. Uh, open the questions from members. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Chair. Um, thanks for putting in the longer trending. That's that's really good to see. Thank you. Um, and it's good to see the uh, echoing what the uh, Chair said, uh, Councillor Ford. It's good to see the actions coming down. Um, there's just a couple of things on the data set. Uh, is there any chance we can split it out through a high risk, medium risk, and low risk across that trending period so that we can see? where we've, we've, we've targeted high risk and, and if we've got a problem with certain metrics going up and down. Um, are any of the um, findings, repeat findings? From the, from the actual review of those, those high, pro, just specifically in relation to the high priority recommendations, there weren't, there weren't any effectively repeat findings that were identified from previous, previous reviews. However, we do continually, for example, review payment card industry standards, for example, and things, and, and, those, and those areas, and again, those recommendations, they're not necessarily repeat recommendations, they're new recommendations because the payment card standards and the requirements have changed over time. So effectively what we've done is on the new PCI DSS compliance review, which was completed February, March this year, then what we've done is we, we've actually gone through and re-evaluated the recommendations um, and again that's one of the things that we have been doing with ICT services in particular um, because we've got an external audit, uh, external resource for providing our for our providing internal audit for ICT what we've done is we've also had a look at outstanding recommendations to make sure that they're still relevant current and focused in the right areas as well. So, for example, we do get repeat, for example, audits in GDPR, for example, in those areas, but there's nothing there that's, that's been identified that I can see that, that has been a repeat. If we do get any repeats, could we flag that on the report as well, please, just so that we can sort of give them their own merit and, and, and have a look at them? Yes, I can do that, and I can also have a look at the data sets as well to provide those trends as well. Yeah, although part of the sort of the data set trend is on within the appendix um, underneath the, the graph, we have got a table of the numbers of high, medium and low recommendations over time. So, so that is in, but I can provide a graphical representation of that, which maybe would be more, more appropriate rather than the table. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Cooper, uh, I know you've got some other questions. I'm going to open up to Councillor uh, Cook or Councillor Thurgood. Councillor Cook, yeah. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, obviously, um, it's a bit of a startling comment at the beginning. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm an expert on internal audit. I'm certainly not. So I just want to dig into what this actually means because it might not be as bad as it sounds. Obviously, progress during quarter one of 22-23 is contained and detailed in Appendix 1 to this report. The performance against target is low, currently 6% completion of the audit plan. I mean, just as a layman sat reading that, it makes me want to jump out the window. I mean, could you just lay out, is that a problem? Is it not a problem? Is it standard? Is there a plan to recover it? I mean, just put me in, in a good place with it. Yeah, in actually taking, taking that 6% as a comparison compared with last year, for example, in 21-22, at, at the end of quarter one last year, we were at a similar percentage of 6%. And by the end of the by the end of 31st of March, we'd achieved just over 80% of the audit plan. Part of the issues that we've 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 had in relation to that percentage of completion of the audit plan is part of that is resource, as in not having a senior auditor effectively located at Litchfield who we could draw down to bring in to do to do audits. Effectively, the audit team at Tamworth is effectively myself as audit manager, and I have to draw down resource from Litchfield to complete, complete the plan. Now, the other side of the, of the coin on that quarter one is that throughout sort of internal audit generally, quarter one is a relatively low completion period. And that's normally because we are completing the planned work that rolled forward basically from 21-22. So we've actually had to roll that forward into, into quarter one. And as I outlined in my report, that meant that we completed NNDR and assets and inventory, which were actually scheduled for last financial year, but were completed in the first quarter. The plan to go, move forward and actually achieve the, the, the plan by the end of the financial year is to bring in that resource as in the, the, the contractual resource. And the other, the other side of the, the element which I tried to highlight in relation to my report is also the fact that whilst we haven't completed audits, the 6% of the plan is only taken on a fully completed audit which means that we have gone through the draft report stage, we've gone through the final report stage and the management actions have been agreed. So as part of that, we do have currently two draft reports and we've got one where, where we have got work ongoing. If I just look at the raw figures in relation just taking two audits or just taking one audit, for example, the completion of one audit is approximately between six and six and a half percent of the audit plan. So once we start to complete audits, that, that percentage then starts to go up significantly. We haven't had necessarily any issues in relation to IT audits. We are, as, I'm, as I mentioned, we've got IT web portals, which is the draft report stage, and the following audit will, will come in, in train into, into quarter, this quarter and into quarter three. Um, so I hope that answers the question in relation to that. But what, like I say, one of the things that we will be doing is making sure that we have got that contractual resource to provide the, the plan and the plan completion by the end of, end of the year. But naturally, um, within internal audit, as I mentioned previously, quarter one is a relatively slow month for completion. Uh, but again, I, I keep the plan under review to make sure that we are, we are hitting the targets. Yeah, follow on if I can, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so, um, long story short, we've had some staffing issues and we've fallen behind. Could you repeat that? Uh, long story short, we've had some staffing issues and it mean we've not kept up with the work. Is that, is that what we're saying? Yeah, that e effectively, I haven't been able to draw down the, the resource from, from Litchfield within... Yes, one of, my, one of my auditors at Litchfield is a principal auditor and she has done work for us during that period. Um, but again, if we had a we had a further role at Litchfield, I could draw down more resource to bring bring that into into play. Um, and again, I think one of the things that we've 
we've tried to do obviously one of the things that we tried to do is actually complete the full audit plan for last last year as well so that we can draw a line under it and say that's now complete and then moving forward I obviously understand that and i'm comfortable with that but you've obviously stayed there we were only around six percent this time last year going back to council cooper's point about trends if we're saying right now we're behind target and we were behind target last year are we targeting incorrectly you know, should we be balancing this through the year better? Because if we keep writing the same thing every year that we're behind target, then the target's misplaced, isn't it? That, that's, that's the last question I'm trying to get to. I do try, I do attempt as part of the audit planning process to profile the, the year through. And one of the things that I do try and do is within the sort of the profile, the percentage of completion will be lower in quarter one rather than in quarter two, three, and then four. So as we go through, as we go through time, as I say, that the, the, the numbers of audits completing increases. And again, we do, we do have a look at that profile. But again, one of the things that we do, we, we, we are sort of having those discussions with management around the timing of audits to ensure that they're, they're, they're carried out in a prompt, prompt manner. Um, but again, I mean, one of the other things that I can do is report pro against profile on a, on a quarterly basis to the committee, which I think would probably inform the, the process a lot better. Uh, yeah, please, Andrew, that would be great. I'll let, I'll let you come back. We'll tackle that. Yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, go on, Captain Cook. Yeah, I'm still trying to get to this. So it's two years running with missed target. Is the target incorrect? It's a simple question. I, I don't, personally, I don't believe that the target is, is incorrect. If we go back to last financial year, for example, I took, I took up post in June 2021 and there wasn't an audit effectively my predecessor left on the 31st of march so again we were in a we were in a position at that point we were actually obviously again trying to recruit but also go through the process of getting a contractor in place to actually deliver this year we've had i suppose from from my perspective what's happened is the lower the low lower percent this year is due to the completion of the audits from last financial year. Um, if I take a, um, an example from the previous year, for example, there weren't any audits that actually were rolled over between financial years between 1920 and 2021. This year, because, because we had a, a lower completion percentage of 80%, we had two, two and a half audits that we needed to complete during that first quarter. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, just trying to hopefully clarify. I think what you, you suggested is, is absolutely right. What you need, because that 6% on its own doesn't actually mean anything. Because if you're thinking we should have completed 25% and we've only done six, then that's not quite where we should be. So what Andrew is, is committed to do in the future reports is actually profile that per quarter. So in the first quarter, for example, it may it may be 6% that we, 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 uh, we profile. Yes, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's not, it, it, it needs to be made clearer. So yeah, so if it is, uh, I mean, subject to the work that Andrew's gonna be, um, bringing or the, the information he's going to bring it might be 10 percent so six percent compared to ten percent might be the answer and you might say well we're four percent behind what's the reasons for that and as andrew said part of it is resourcing which we're getting you know we're employing some external resource to bring the audit plan up to date hopefully by the end of the next quarter or as close to close as we can be and, and part of it is sort of that that catching up from from last year because we, they didn't, you know, we didn't finish all the audits by the end of the year. But quite, quite clearly, as Andrew said, we, we, there's two two more audits at draft report stage that aren't included in those figures. So if you add those in at six percent per audit, we're up at roughly twenty percent, aren't we? So it, it's not as perhaps as bad as as uh, the six percent suggests. But I think all of that needs to be put into that and and the target included to hopefully make it clearer. Yeah. Uh, 
if I can just if I can just come back on that, I have I have just looked at the the sort of the the audit plan and just done a quick quick tot up. Effectively, quarter one should have been at eighteen percent. So that so so it is a it is a lower lower amount. But again, that's just very rough figures. Just taking taking that just just now. But that but I can go forward putting the profile in and showing that within my reports going forward. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. That would be appreciated. Any other questions or comments? Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Chair. Um, just going back to the outstanding actions again. Um, the ones that are left over are because we seem to be bobbling at, at around about a, a median figure, around 75. Uh, probably around 90 for a medium figure. So I'm just wondering, do, what what is stopping us from from reducing those? Because we do seem to be sort of bobbling around that 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 figure. The, with with um, outstanding audit recommendations, one one of the things that we do have is we've got the outstanding audit recommendations as we go along. As those complete, that figure goes down. And then once we do audits, that figure then goes back up again because we've got additional recommendations coming in. So, so effectively, the, what you find is that there is, there is sort of a median figure that, that you do sort of go along against. I'd be extremely suspicious if that figure dropped dramatically down to 10, 15, because then we're, we're in the position that the majority, the majority of all audits will actually add in five, six, seven recommendations at a time. So again, what we find is that you have, you have five or six recommendations completing, and then you have five or six recommendations replacing them. So you end up with the same figure going, go, going along. I'm a little bit dubious with that because that kind of feels like we're almost finding issues to remain ourselves at, at, a, at a level of outstanding actions. For me, yeah. I'd rather look at the report and it tell me the truth. Yeah. If there are 380 issues in, 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 in the council that we, mm. we need to action, then show it. If there's yeah. none, show that, be brave about, about what we're showing. I think saying, uh, well, if we get it down to zero, then we'll find more and then that will push us up. I, I accept your point that there's there's a program of audits that's in place and that will top naturally top up the balance of outstanding actions and, and, and actions. However, I think that um, it has to be an accurate representation of the of the issues that the council's got. I I, I agree with 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 sentiments that you say on in relation to to that. One of the things that, as as audit manager then as far as I'm concerned, then we report without fear nor favour. So therefore, as far as I'm concerned, if there are issues, we will report them and we'll report them to management. If they're serious issues or financial issues, then those will be referred through to Stefan, the Section 151 officer. And also I have direct line to Andrew Barrett as chief executive as well. I think, the, I think what I was sort of trying to, to to put over is is also within sort of the and, and it probably my fault I wasn't I wasn't clear on this was the the we've also got outstanding audit recommendations for example that haven't actually got to their end date or natural end date or agreed end date so what we what we've done more recently since I started was to make sure that those recommendations were of a more timely nature. In other words, that they could, that, and also the management responses were appropriate and that we can actually move forward and address those weaknesses that we found during our audits. Again, one of the things that I did find when I, when I first started back in June 2021 was that we had a lot of open-ended audit recommendations that were almost self-fulfilling prophecies that you couldn't actually close off. And, and again, that's part of the assessment that we, we, we're now doing in relation to that. But again, I think for, from my perspective, if, if there were, obviously if there were fewer 
recommendations outstanding, then yes, that, that would be, a, that would be a, a bonus in relation to how we progressed and management have progressed those, those, those audit recommendations. I think from, from my perspective, I, men I mentioned a number of actions coming up or a number of recommendations, but that was to sort of highlight that we do make those recommendations to management, we do follow those recommendations up, and we do follow them through to conclusion as well, especially the high priority recommendations where I say we, we do take those on board and we also do fully retest those, those recommendations to make sure that they are, they are um, they are implemented. The other side of that is, as, as may be aware, where we do have limited assurance reviews, um, where, where from in our in our opinion as the as as audit it's limited assurance, we do do f a full follow up of that of those audits, and those are reported through to this this committee as well. Thank you very much, Andrew. Any other comments? Questions, Danny? Councillor Cook, sorry. Uh, do you want to come back? No, I don't want to come back. I'll put you know the question, go. Councillor Cook first, then Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, I think certainly Stefan's heard me say this for a number, number of years. I mean, the uh, previous leader before the current leader actually banned this word being used in report. So I will not vote for this recommendation while it contains the term, the committee note the report. To note a report just says it's to say I've read it. What is that telling you? Nothing. Uh, I can't vote for report that says note it. Uh, Councillor Cook, you know my I was thinking that. about this in my head while reading the recommendation, um, just, uh, and there's nothing for us to vote on because all we get asked is to, to note it. And um, after Councillor Scoop's question, if there are no more, I will um, announce that we have noted it and there's nothing for us to vote on. <laughs> Councillor Cooper. With the, within the asset register section, um, within the report where, you, where you've had a look, I think, is that? Have I got that right or wrong? Is that... Oh God, now you're asking. Uh, that would be... You're going to tell me I'm wrong now. It is... Page... 40. Assets and Inventory, page 40. Um, within that, that line, there's no no reference to asset management plans for our for our assets. Um, do do we have those in place, and were they part of the audit? They weren't included as part of the as part of the the scope of of the audit. The the information provided is the assurance summary of the areas that we actually covered during the the actual audit. Um, I can. I would need to go come back. Oh. Yeah. So, <clears throat> if you remember, when, when the uh, budget in MTFS comes to uh, council in February each year, we we produce um, a, a corporate capital strategy with that. That also includes reference to our asset management planning approach. Mm -hmm. Now, our old or our, our previous asset management plan was out, out of date, it was, I think it dated back to 2015. So it was reviewed in year last year, um, and we've now got a, a up, an up-to-date asset management survey, if you like, but what we're, we're working on this year as part of the asset management group is actually you know, putting that into a, an updated asset management plan. So that will be coming to members, it, I'm surprised it's not. It's probably on a, a, an agenda for um, ISAC, probably. I would have thought I'm, I'm, uh, in in the near future. But we can, we can check on that and let you know. Um, but yeah, it's definitely in progress. Yeah, I think obviously there's got to be an override in our asset management plan for 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 for, for the for the borough and and for our asset base. But I'm talking specifically individual allocated asset management plans for each asset, so that we go into that level of detail whereby we we may take a certain building, and and, and each one of our types of buildings has a breakdown plan. Um, 
I don't think we're there yet. Let's, let's, let's be honest. Um, we, we've got the surveys for each building. We've got an, well, we're working on this overarching asset management plan. That is one of the cap corporate capital strategy recommendations. Is that we have a plan for each of those assets, and whether that is, it may be, you know, it needs invest, investment. It may be that we need to, uh, you know, sell it. Um, but each asset will have a plan, depending on the return that it gives the council, not only in financial terms but in sort of. Uh, operational terms. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, the recommendation was we note the report, and I believe we have noted it and asked many questions. So thank you very much. Uh, item seven: independent member update. Uh, Andrew. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've provided an update following the questions raised at this committee's meetings on 10th of February and the 22nd of March 2022, and also incorporated the responses following the meeting in June. Um, the questions raised and answers provided are contained in my report, and I would like to highlight that these have been discussed with the Council's monitoring officer with input from the Chief Executive and the Council's Section 151 officer. I have made specific updates within the proposed roadmap and also updated this in respect of the questions raised, specifically around rehabilitation of offenders, significant business dealings, conflicts of interest and potential recruitment panel. Um, I would also like to highlight that SITFA has recently provided a position, a position statement on audit committees and I've included this within Appendix 1 of my report. The, the position statement highlights that as part of having an independent and effective model of governance, that audit committees should include co-opted co independent members and also sit for recommendations, recommends potentially two independent members to provide appropriate technical expertise. However, the, require, the recommendation around two independent members is dependent upon size of organisations and size of councils, etc. It is proposed to undertake a recruitment exercise as outlined in the road map, and I'm ha more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Uh, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, a lot of those questions, I believe, came from me at uh, uh, the uh, 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 February meeting. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, I've got one comment, and uh, it is similar to the one I made to you, I think it was back in November 2021. How likely do you think we're going to be able to get uh, at least one member? Uh, so I would recommend heavily that we don't look for two at all. Um, um, I think I gave the example if in 2021 of people uh, of the larger unitaries paying these members a small amount. Um, obviously, I don't think we're, we're gonna, ever going to be in a position to do that, so I would not recommend we, or suggest we ever did that. Um, can, I, can I please uh, propose that we uh, only look for one member at this time, and if we do get a member, or a vast amount of interest, we review it um, uh, after a period of them. Uh, but I will open up to questions from other members. Yeah, Councillor Cook. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Ford. Uh, echo your comments there. One would be enough. However, I wouldn't be against paying somebody for their work a small amount or an SRA. Or I'm sure we'd work something. I think we've historically done similar things uh, through the old standards process. But yeah, absolutely, one would be enough. Yeah, it's just a basic question, and it's not not even that serious a question. I'm just curious. Obviously, the, the list of the candidates must not. Good luck finding every in town with a candidate. Well, at least one of those boxes. But yeah, just a quick question. Uh, must not have significant business dealings with the council. Uh, what does significant mean? Where, where's, where, where's the line? <laughs> Andrew, could you give uh, some clarification on that one, please? Yeah. The, this, is, this is one where um, we, significant business interests, I would suggest, are having a contractual relationship with the council in relation to... Um, to, to actually be able to show that there's transparency of process in relation to, to that. Um, obviously, one of the things that um, I, have, I have sort of said in, in my roadmap is around that prior to application, they also must not be seeking any type of commission with the authority for the term of the appointment as well. So again, I think, I think the, the difficulty is that 
there isn't a specific definition I would suggest of significant. I think it's if if there's an individual who's got a contractual relationship with the authority, then that would preclude them from actually being an independent member. Uh, thank you. Um, um, but no, uh, Andrew, unless anybody's got any other members, please pro proceed. And, um, Mr Chair, should we move that as a recommendation that we believe one is enough? Uh, I'm more than happy to move that, have that as a recommendation that we believe one is enough. Uh, Andrew knows my, has known my views on having one is enough for quite a while, but uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to move that we, are, we, th this recommend, we recommend that uh, the committee recommends that we only ha uh, look at seek, seek one uh, to be, and to be reviewed at the end of the three-year period uh, of the first member, independent member, completing their term kind of thing. The words can be worked out, but you, this, the sentiment I'm assuming you understand. <laughs> My chair, um, I think the other the other side, and I fully agree with with the sentiments that you've provided in, in relation to that. I think now that SITFA have issued that position statement, I think the pool of potential candidates will decrease over time because other authorities will be going through a similar similar process. And I think if it certainly, if we can get onto that recruitment process now, we're, we're at a better stage. I do know that there are a number of other authorities um, in the area that are also st starting to do, go through this process. So, so like I say, if we think if we can take that road back forward, that would be beneficial. Thank you very much, Andrew, and I've just, um... One final comment uh, from me, and it was in regard to uh, the other authorities paying them. Um, if you update us on the number of applicants, uh, we don't need to know who they are, obviously the whole list of um, applicants, but uh, if we struggle to find any, I think it potentially would need to, the question you need to ask, do we need to offer some kind of financial reimbursement to these members, but we re can review that uh, after the application stage uh, later in uh, we're potentially caught uh, caught for of this, uh, Miss Puyer. Everyone happy with that? Yeah, Councillor Cook. Yeah, uh, praying I get proved wrong. Not that I'm religious, but if you find it, um, somebody in the residence of Tamworth that wants to come and sit here for three hours on the 28th of September and read audit reports and internal risk management reports for free, good luck. <laughs> I, I don't see that happening. I really hope it does. I don't see it happening. I think there would have to be a small, you know, reimbursement for time and services given. Uh, agreed. But let's see what we can get first. <laughs> Um, okay, item number nine, I move following resolution that in accordance with the provisions of local authorities, executive roads, meetings and access to information, England, regulations 2012 and section 100, uh, 100A, brackets four, of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph uh, paragraph 3 of Part 1 of Schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. Can I have a second, please? Yes, Thank you. I'm not seconded. I was just curious if you wanted to do item 8 first. Yeah. <laughs> but it was well read. Oh. It's a shame, you've got to read it again. <laughs> Oh, so mate, all in government's comment tables. Then you got to, got to get any comments on it. The only the item, no, nor do I. The item was uh, that was recommended to move to October. I think we should keep on the September meeting, uh, and the chair of the committee isn't here, so we can't disagree with me. Um, so um, I'm quite happy to keep that uh, on the September meeting. But any comments from members? Any comments on officers? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to seek. Uh, advice on whether I have to reread the exclusion of the press and public statement again. Thank you very much. For this meet, uh, let's let Jody tell us when we're clear. I've, I've moved it. Everyone seconded it. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm assuming we're all in favour. Thank you very much.